Welcome to MEM 18072, Thread Identification and Part Numbering. This lecture is complementary to the PERTEC Thread Identification and Part Numbering and Training Reference Guide publications. All supporting material mentioned in this lecture can be downloaded from PMoodle. Plenty of useful information available to you as a technician from PConnect. Latest parts catalogues are available at www.pertech.com.au. Other valuable references are the Machinery's Handbook, for example. A thread identification kit from Pertech is a must have for efficiently and accurately identifying threads and fittings. If you don't have a thread identification kit, you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way, verniers, rules, screw pitch gauges and protractors. We will be investigating both methods today. You are going to need the Pertec fitting identification charts. These are available from P Moodle or you can get this chart from your training reference guide. Thread systems. There's three main systems in the world. British Standard Whitworth, Unified and Metric. British Standard Whitworth is the oldest of the standardised threading system and it was developed by Sir Joseph Whitworth in 1841. It can be identified by its 55 degree flank angles and rounded peaks and valleys. Whitworth threads are identified by a nominal size, which does not have anything to do with this actual size, and th threads per inch. You will need a thread chart, and you also need a method of measuring the TPI, screw pitch gauge, rule, etc. In the new colonies like America, the unified thread standard evolved from the British standard Whitworth. Unified differs from British Standard Whitworth as it has 60 degree flank angles and it has a rounded root and a flat crest. As with the British Standard Whitworth thread, the nominal size has got nothing to do with the actual diameter of the thread. You'll also have to identify this thread by the threads per inch and you'll have to reference the actual outside diameter of the thread to a reference chart of some type. The ISO metric thread is now the most commonly used general purpose screw thread type in the world. As with the unified thread, it has 60 degree flank angles and a rounded root and a flat crest. Unlike the inch version of threads, metric threads are identified by the outside diameter and they're also identified by the pitch the distance between the peaks of the thread. There are thousands of fittings. There are many different thread systems. Identifying the threads can be quite challenging and complicated, so we need to be working to a system. We first need to identify the type of thread, then we identify the type of fitting. From the fitting, we can derive three types of information. The ID or OD of the thread, the threads per inch or pitch, and the seating angle. Utilising reference charts and numbering and identification systems, in our case, the PERTEC identification system, we can quickly work out what type of fitting we are identifying. Here is the PERTEC thread identification chart and the PERTEC thread identification kit. Once we've identified the type of threads on our fitting or adapter, we'll need to determine what type of fitting it is. Is it a male to female, female to male, uh, BSPP to JIC, etc. We looked at numbering systems in a previous unit. Here's Pertex numbering system to identify adapters. From the adapter group chart, it's obvious that this particular fitting belongs to the straight group. The series letter, which is number one, 
identifies that it's a straight fitting. The next two characters specify the type of thread on the straight fitting. It's important to remember that the threads need to be identified in a specific order. In this case, the British Standard Parallel Pipe is specified first and the JIC specified second. I found this hydraulic fitting lying around. Let's identify it. There's two ends, so I'll need to cut it in half and gather some information off both ends so I can then proceed to identify the thread. This can get messy, so I'm going to use a nice template to organize my information. In this case, uh, measurements. I used a photo for this lecture, but you'd probably make a sketch inside that box for identification purposes. Firstly, let's start working on side one. Here I'm using the calipers from the Pertec thread identification kit to measure the outside diameter. On my template, I enter the 14.10 millimeter diameter for side one. Now I will identify the seat angle. In this case, it's 37 degrees. Now I need to determine the pitch or the threads per inch. Here I'm utilizing the screw pitch gauge from the Pertec thread identification kit. My screw pitch gauge tells me it's 18 threads per inch. I measured side two and it's exactly the same as side one. Here, I've entered all the information for side two. Now we're gonna need the Pertec thread identification chart to get the rest of the information we need to identify the fitting or adapter. Firstly, let's have a look along the top of our thread identification chart to see if any of the thread forms looks like the one we're trying to identify. As we can see here, it's going to be either four or six. Well, let's have a look here. Well, number four is 30 degree cone angle. So it can't be ours. Ours is 37. So ours is definitely six. And it looks like it's a JIC thread. Moving along row six, the JIC row, we come along to 14.3 millimeters. We measured 14.1, keeping in mind that we can have anywhere up to 0.4 variation from the size that we measured. So 4.3 and 4.1, it's pretty close. Keeping in mind, both ends of our adapter are the same. So we'll enter JIC-09 to identify both ends. We nearly have all the information we need. All we need now is a series identifier. Well, we know it's a straight fitting and it's JIC both ends. So it looks like it's a P series. All we need now is the series identifier and the dash numbers. And we have our Pertec adapter part number. Here's the P-0909 from the Pertec catalog. And just happens to be a 916th 18 TPI UNF thread. Let's try a different one. This time a 90 degree adapter. Here we can see side one is male and side two is female. This time I'll measure the diameter of the thread on side one using vernier calipers. My vernier reads 14.08 millimeters for the outside diameter, keeping in mind when I'm identifying the thread that I have 0.4 of a millimeter tolerance from nominal size in each direction when identifying the thread. Here I'm measuring the seat angle or the cone angle. Keep in mind, these angles may be difficult to measure. Sometimes you might want to just bend a bit of wire around the angle and measure it with a protractor. 
we have another 37 degree cone angle. Here I'm identifying the pitch or the threads per inch using a rule. Once again, we're 18 threads per inch. Let's finish identifying side one. Here we look on the top row and we try and find a thread form that looks similar to the one we're trying to identify. Once again, it could either be four or six. It's obviously a six because our flare or cone angle is 37 degrees. So we've identified it as a JIC thread form. We now move along row six until we can find an outside diameter that's within 0.4 millimeters of the diameter that we measured on the fitting. In this case, it's a dash nine again. Side one's completed and our table is populated. This time we're measuring the inside diameter of the thread of side two, which is a female fitting. Here we measured a 12.79 millimeter inside diameter for the thread. Here I'm measuring the internal cone angle using the Pertec angle gauge from the thread identification kit. These angles can be a bit tricky to measure. You might have to get creative if you don't have a angle gauge. Here we measured 37 degrees. Here I'm using a screw pitch gauge to measure the internal thread. And again, I measured 18 threads per inch. Back to my thread identification chart, and it looks like it's either four or six again. My flare or cone angle is 37 degrees, so it looks like we're at JIC again. Following the JIC row again, and I come across 13 millimeters, which is very close to my 12.71 that I measured on the inside diameter. We have our thread information. All we need now is our series identifier. From my adapter chart, we know that it's a 90 degree elbow. They're both JIC threads and it's a male and female. So we are a CAB identifier for our fitting. Take note on our identification chart, it says male, female. So the male thread form has to be specified first. So the male dash number goes before the female dash number for the CAB series adapter. Let's add the series to our table. Identifying the adapter in our case is quite simple. We have the series identifier and they're both dash zero nines. So it's a CAB dash zero nine dash zero nine. There are three identifiers with this type of adapter. I will need to double check the Pertec catalog. Check the few dimensions and we're definitely a CAB adapter. This time, let's have a go at identifying a fitting or an adapter from a drawing. This one's taken out of the thread identification and part numbering uh, workbook that's available from PMoodle. This time I've populated the tables from the information of the drawing. It's also obvious that both sides are male. Firstly, let's look at side one. This could either be a one or a seven type thread form. In this case, we have two options, BSPP and UN-O. The closest OD that I have to my size is 21 millimeters. The pitches are the same, but 21 millimeters is basically spot on to the outside diameter that I measured on my fitting. So it's definitely a BSPP thread. We will later discover that there was actually a 30 degree cone inside the fitting. We couldn't see it from the original drawing. Even though we didn't have all the information, we were still able to identify the thread. Side one is done and populated. Now let's work on side two. Side two is either a four or six again. In this case, 
Again, it's 37 degrees, so it's a JIC thread form. OD, 30.1, perfect. Looks like it's a dash 19. We have all our thread information. Now let's find out what the series is. Looks like it's a series C. It's BSPP first and JIC second. So it's a C-08-19. Be aware that the images in the catalogue might not represent the orientation of the fitting. In the image to the right, uh, BSPP is actually the one on the right hand side, not the left. Use the series identification numbering system to identify adapters. You can download a copy of this template from PMoodle. Don't forget to grab a handful of adapters and practice identifying them.